welcome back to my channel. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely amazing. Today on the show, y'all, Winter Ops Part 2. What's the difference between a watch and a warning? And what do we as drivers do to be alerted in case of severe weather? Or in case of a blizzard? Stay tuned. So, watch versus warning. Which is worse? Well, the answer is quite obvious. A warning here in the United States means something is imminent or occurring, whereas a watch simply means to be prepared for whatever may happen next during the day. Now, what do we do in a watch? Well, that, that answer is easy. In a watch, we grab a radio like this one. This is a NOAA all hazards weather alert radio and what it does is it goes off whenever there's a warning issued by the National Weather Service here in the United States your country may have a similar program so if you live in a foreign country like Canada or perhaps Japan or the UK or Australia or Germany check with your local authorities to see how they monitor and alert for the public for severe weather. Some some places may have the siren mentality, as I like to call it. The siren mentality is where you rely exclusively on outdoor warning sirens to get your watches and warnings. And that is a huge no-no here in the United States because sirens don't cover everywhere and sirens are often used for things like medical emergencies and for fires and for criminal activity for example just basically they'll use the sirens to alert the public to anything and not just severe weather but they only work outdoors they don't work over a noisy air conditioning system and they definitely may not work inside your vehicle so it's better to be safe than sorry a weather alert at radio is a great complement to your phone Yes, I have a few different phones around my apartment, and I use them for very good reason. Because when severe weather's imminent, I want to know where the weather's going to hit, and also with what I'm going to do if, let's say, I'm here at home when suddenly things start breaking loose. Now, winter weather warnings are typically issued a day in advance of a winter storm. Severe weather warnings may be issued minutes to maybe an hour in advance of whatever severe weather is occurring. So, typically that means that the storm has been indicated on radar and it's headed your way. What do you do in that situation? Well, in the event of a severe storm, the answer is easy. You find a safe place to pull over until conditions improve especially if the storm is called a tornado which is a very large funnel shaped cloud that descends from a thunderstorm and is rotating now sometimes there's stove pipes sometimes there are rope but if and chances are that it might even be wrapped in rain so you can't see it at all so in the event of a tornado look for things like flying trash things getting pushed around or perhaps roof tiles getting torn off a building in the event of a severe thunderstorm though you probably won't see any of that which leads me to the severe thunderstorm warning this is the second strongest warning in the National Weather Service system and for good reason it means wind gusts are strong enough to tip a tractor trailer 58 miles per hour or faster. It also means lots of lightning and large hail which can put drivers in danger at any time and it can also knock trees down onto the roadway and cause flash flooding. The third worst type of severe weather warning is a flood warning 
and for obvious reasons, because a flood can shut down a highway for hours, just as it did in Arkansas with me a few weeks ago, and it can also cause building damage and if you remember Hurricane Harvey, it can cause extreme flooding over a wide area. So, in those situations, you really have to pay attention to what's going on around you to make sure you're going to be safe. In the event of winter weather, floods can also occur. And winter storms are typically warned when winds are 35 miles an hour or faster, when air temperatures are near or below zero, or when snowfall rates are two inches an hour or greater. Now, a winter storm will be warned further in advance than a severe thunderstorm or tornado. Perhaps instead of minutes, it being hours or even a day. In the event of a winter storm, you want a snow scraper like this one in your vehicle at all times, along with your winter weather emergency kit. This way you can clean off your LED headlights, your windshield, and anything else that the snow may touch in order to keep your visibility clear. Also, in the event of winter weather, it's important to have the phone numbers for your local DOT. In many parts of the U.S. that number is 511. In other parts of the country like down here in Texas for example or in Arkansas or in Missouri you may have a dedicated phone number to call for road conditions. And I can link to those phone numbers later on in the show notes as well as to various websites you can go to. So, uh, what do you do if the highway shuts down due to winter weather or due to flooding as I mentioned earlier? Well, the best thing to do is find an open detour. But if that's not possible, because these winter storms and severe storms can cover a wide area, you will want to have a plan beforehand. So you saw the Motor Carriers Atlas earlier, that's always a good reference. And if you're going to have to detour or shut down, that emergency kit will likely come in handy. An emergency kit consists of extra food and extra supplies, which I covered in my previous episode. Also make sure you have extra clothing on board your vehicle because you are going to get cold real quick in some of these weather situations and you want to stay warm. Anyways, y'all take care, have a good day, and I'll make your next trip your best trip, and I'll see you on the next episode.